All right, what's up guys? Vince Blaze here with Adventures Within Media. I hope you guys are doing well. Personally, I'm doing I'm doing decent. You know, Winnipeg just got back into uh, another lockdown and unfortunately we can't do much, but uh, you know, we do what we can with what we have. Today, as you guys can probably tell from the title, we are reviewing the Canon EOS R, this bad boy. It's not a new camera or anything. You might be wondering why am I making this review? One, it's because it's the camera that I've been using for the last two years. But also I do think that there's a lot of there's a lot of benefits in reflecting in your own gear and hearing other people's opinions about the gear that they've been using because that also gives you insight in terms of what you should be looking for when you're making a purchase even though you might not be necessarily looking at this camera. There might still be individuals looking to buy this camera and I'll give my recommendations to who I think this camera would be really useful for, but I hope that you guys can gain some insights from my own personal experience using this camera. Before we get into it, I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of my history with this camera so you guys understand where I'm coming from. I've been using the OSR, as I mentioned, for about two years now, and I was previously using a Canon 80D. At first, when the EOS R was released, I didn't really think that it was a good camera. You know, I thought it was a gimmick. When there's the first time that a company goes into a certain market, I'm always skeptical, especially with phones, you know, when they introduce a new feature, et cetera, et cetera. Typically, I just wait for them to, you know, come with the second version of it, just because usually there's mistakes, there's errors, there's glitches in the first version. I ended up having the opportunity to use it on a couple of shoots because one of my friends had it and he absolutely loved it. I enjoyed using it. Uh, to be honest, I was really attracted to the C-Log. I didn't really know much about bit depth at the time. And so I thought that buying the camera was a really good option. I ended up purchasing the camera. I I have also actually purchased a second one. So the one that you're seeing right now is what we're shooting with. And this is the second one. And those have been my main workhorse for the last two years. I have shot weddings. I've shot travel videos with it. I went to Banff with it, to Hawaii. I've shot commercials. I've shot promotional videos. I've shot a lot of photos, thousands of photos with it. And yeah, I think that I have a pretty good perspective on what it's capable of doing. So as I mentioned, the two main reasons I wanted to purchase this camera was one for C-Log for video, as I mentioned. And the second reason was for the full frame. So my Canon 80D didn't have a full frame, it was a crop sensor. And so I wanted to upgrade and I thought that the EOS R would be a good option. So now that you guys know a little bit of my context or my background history um, with this camera, uh, let's go through some of the pros and cons that I have found about this camera. Number one pro, I'd say is probably the autofocus on this camera. Canon has always been well known for their dual pixel autofocus and this camera does not disappoint. Although I did have some adjustments uh, coming from a crop sensor to a full frame, uh, I absolutely love the autofocus on Canons and this camera in particular uh, does not disappoint. The second pro is not necessarily particular to this camera, but the full frame. I really enjoyed, as I mentioned, the full frame aspect of it. Uh, it just gives a wider field of view. The bokeh on every single one of my pictures is even better. The depth of field is better. The compression is better. There's more light that hits the sensor. It's just overall a very good experience. So if you're considering going from a crop sensor or a micro four thirds sensor to a full frame, I would say do it. I think it's worthwhile. I really enjoy it. After that, I'd say the build quality of this camera is pretty good. You know, I brought this, as I mentioned, to Hawaii, to Banff. It hasn't really broken or anything. There's a few scratches, but that's about it. There's been some sand that got into my sensor at one point, but that was pretty much me not being careful enough. But yeah, overall, it's a very solid camera. Uh, really no complaints in terms of the build quality. The swivel screen, I absolutely love Canon swivel screens. They feel really rugged, they feel really strong. Actually on the camera that's shooting right now, I ended up purchasing the additional battery grip and it made it feel like a 1DX Mark II and it wasn't like uh, loose or anything, it didn't wiggle or anything. I really enjoy uh, having that camera, it's nice and beefy. Um, and just holding it overall, I think is a good experience. The grip is really nice on these cameras as compared to I'd say probably any other camera that's on the market right now. The only gripe I have with the build quality is the record button. I did end up getting a little bit of sand in this one and it made it a little bit difficult to press on the record button. Even once the sand was cleaned out, whenever you press on the record button, sometimes it doesn't record so you have to press really hard I find, but that's pretty much my only gripe in terms of the build quality. I think that the most underrated aspect of this camera is its usability and also its convenience. You know, it's a really, really easy and fun to use camera. Ever since I've had it, it's been fun to shoot. It's made me want to shoot. I never feel like, oh, I have to shoot with this camera and I can pull it out. I can, I know it's reliable. I know what it can do. Obviously I'm very familiar with the Canon ecosystem, but that being said, it does what it's supposed to do. 
and it does it well. You know, you don't need to go through tons of menus to be able to look for the settings. Pretty straightforward. The touchscreen is super intuitive. All the settings are where you would normally expect them to be. They're very easy to access. I often would give this camera to one of my friends to take a picture of me or a video of me. And obviously most of the time I'm pre-programming the settings for them. But that being said, people who have never used a camera are finding it pretty easy to use. And even people who are coming from other ecosystems such as Sony and Nikon, etc., are not finding it that difficult or didn't find it that difficult to be able to just hop on and use. So in terms of usability, I think this is a really fun camera to use. Onto the cons. So a lot of people would agree that this is probably one of the most controversial cameras of its time prior to the EOS R5. You know, there's quite a few things that aren't necessarily adequate for a lot of people. But that being said, I'm just gonna speak on my personal experience and the things that uh, I didn't really like about this camera. Number one con is the video recording quality. The 8-bit, unfortunately, just wasn't enough for the C-Log to be able to properly render colors. And I actually currently don't even shoot in C-Log anymore. I'm just shooting the standard picture profile just because I was finding it very frustrating whenever I tried to bring back some of the blacks on the C-Log. It just wasn't rendering properly. Um, there was always like this fade in the video quality that I just couldn't get rid of if I wanted a really, really deep black or deep colors. Obviously you can fix that if you want to upgrade and get a Atomos Ninja 5 and I think if you externally record you can probably get 10 bit. It kind of defeated the purpose and I never ended up getting one because you know if I'm traveling and I want something small and compact it kind of defeats the purpose if you have to bring a monitor just to be able to record. So again number one con I think is the color bit depth. Second con also video related is the recording options. So in 4K, it only shoots up to 30 frames per second, not 60. That would have been really nice to have. It ended up not being a huge deal because most of the time I'm just shooting in 1080p and I'm just up it to 4K once I'm uploading to YouTube. It saved me a lot of space because when I started shooting 4K for some interviews, it's taken up a lot of space on these SD cards. But yeah, it just would have been nice to have. One more con is the adapter. So I actually have both adapters. I have just the regular adapter and the one with the control ring. Um, the control ring is amazing. It adds that other option to be able to use another setting. Uh, so I ended up having this one set to ISO uh, and I'll explain why later on. I also had the other adapter and the other adapter, it just sometimes it's a little bit loose. This one's pretty solid, but um, when the connection between the lens, it's just sometimes it wiggles a little bit. It just doesn't feel as high quality as uh, I would like it to be. It just adds another layer that you have to worry about. I didn't really like that. It also made it a little bit longer, which made it harder to balance on gibbles. Yeah, it's a minor issue, which is something I didn't really like. Now, the last con is the touch bar. Like, I actually liked the touch bar. I actually liked its usability, it was fine. I didn't come from a joystick, so it didn't really bother me that much. But the problem was I would end up, before I got the uh, control ring, because I only have one control ring on the other camera, I would have this set to ISO. So what would happen is that accidentally I would tap this one one too many times or accidentally touch it. It would put the ISO straight to auto and then the ISO would just fluctuate up and down and go to crazy high numbers while we're shooting. I didn't necessarily realize in time. There was once when I was in Banff, I gave the camera to someone to take photos of me and that ISO was on auto and so he was cranking the shutter, which made the ISO go even higher and ended up giving me really, really grainy photos. So that's a huge con. I just didn't really like it. Uh, ever since you know I realized the first time what was happening, I've had to keep a really close eye on that touch bar and where my ISO is at. Even though it says 100, I always double check and it's something I just feel like I shouldn't have to worry about uh, and something you just gotta keep an eye out if you're going to get or use this camera. I did forget one other con. This is the time-lapse feature. So when I was shooting in C-Log, you can't automatically switch to the internal intervalometer or time-lapse feature that they have. You have to switch off C-Log and then go into the time-lapse mode. And what would happen is I would, after each time-lapse I shot, I would always forget to throw on C-Log, uh, which probably wasn't a bad thing in the end. But what would end up happening is I didn't have C-Log on any of those shots afterwards. And I would only realize like probably like a day later during the shoot. So that was kind of frustrating. And it's a feature that I feel like kind of odd that that happens, but that's another con I forgot to mention.
So that's about it for all the pros and cons for this camera. Um, I'm sure there's things that I didn't mention, but these are the things that stood out to me. Now, who is this camera for? I'd say this camera is for photographers, primarily photographers. If you are someone who wants to take photography a little bit more seriously, you wanna get into portrait photography, landscape photography, you wanna start printing stuff, this is a good camera for photography. I have no complaints. Again, uh, if you want to shoot sports, you might want to look at faster options because this doesn't shoot as quickly as some of the sports require. But besides that, you're good. Like the quality of photos that comes out, I have no complaints. Um, yeah, they're just really nice. If you're someone who is getting into vlogging and you wanna do some like B-roll stuff and some promotional stuff or whatever, some small little video content, or you're just going traveling, going somewhere and you want something high quality to grab some high quality photos and just some video here and there, this is the camera for you. Um, I think this is a really good camera. Like I said, super light, super small too. Um, if you just throw a 50 on here, it looks super cute. So yeah, I'd highly recommend this if you're starting to get into vlogging. If you're wanting to get this camera specifically for video, I'd recommend looking elsewhere. There are way better options like the Sony cameras, the Black Magics if you're really into the cinema world. But yeah, video unfortunately is not this camera's strength at all. Is this camera still relevant in 2021? I think this is kind of just repeating myself at this point because again, for photographers, yes, this is relevant. This is definitely a tool that you can rely on. But if you're doing anything else, like a videographer, professional videography, this wouldn't be the case. I think that there are way better options at this point. Um, you'd probably have to get like an R5 at the least, um, but anything else like the Sony cameras um, and the Black Magics are better options for video. But if you're just doing small little vlog things, again, this is definitely more than what you need for YouTube. So um, yeah, I think that this is definitely still relevant in terms of photo cameras in 2021. That wraps up the video. That's all I have to say about this camera. I've really enjoyed using it for the last two years and I'll probably hang on to it in particular for photos um, when I'm traveling. Clients have a smaller budget, I might be offering this camera instead of using, um, say, or renting out a bigger camera. I will be hopefully getting a better camera for video because I really wanna focus on that aspect for Adventures Within Media and our production side of the business. Yeah, that's my honest thoughts about the camera. So if you guys enjoyed the video, if you guys gained any insights from watching this video, please consider subscribing, it really does help. I'll be posting more content about gear, about content creation, BTS, Stuff. So yeah, uh, definitely stay tuned for that. Obviously hit the like button. Also, if you guys can relate to any of the pros and cons that I mentioned in this video, feel free to drop a comment, uh, letting me know kind of what your experience with using the camera has been. But that's it for me guys. That's it for the video, for the review. I hope you guys enjoyed it again. And um, yeah, I will see you guys in the next one. Cheers.